to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space and I want to follow on from what we did last time looking at how to make a mini journal. I'll leave the link below in the description so you can easily just go and get that now and click onto it. If you want to make one of these you just follow the steps and get to this point and then you can see how we will put the guts into the book which will be our pages so we're going to do that today i've got some papers here i just put that to one side and we'll just get into it um i've got some papers here these are papers that i've dyed i will do more on dyeing there's lots of uh, videos out there about dyeing and i have got my own uh, paper dyeing technique videos here of how I go about doing the dyeing uh, and you and even how you could do it at the desk on a small scale you know how you could do it at your craft table have a play with some of the ways in which you can get some really interesting textures actually these ones aren't well that one is that one's lovely well, I'm gonna this one's coming up I'm going to show you how to do this one so so uh, subscribe to the channel and then you won't miss some of this because um that is a, a really nice botanical one we'll do. Okay, um, so what you need to do is you need to get your paper and you need to fold it in half. If you've got scraps of paper, that's brilliant. Fold those in half because the smaller bits look interesting inside the book um, when they're layered, so it doesn't all have to be uniform. Go through, fold them all in half. This one's already done for me. Uh, this was a jelly print. Um, with acrylic paint on tissue paper that would have been the bottom layer peeping through because it's a sort of a translucent tissue paper I think it was where I was rolling the brayer off so that's just another idea to if you are into printing with acrylic paint you can add them in just some squared school paper there this one's an onion dye using white onion if you use red onion you get green paper so i've got a red onion dye experiment in my videos have a look at that in the playlist for dyeing paper techniques and most of this is put into the beginner's guide in a playlist down there as well and the latest playlist will pop up as um how to make a journal, something like that. How to how to, how to make a mm, something. How to make a book or a journal. It's something like that. That's what it's titled. So look out for that, and then I'll, you can collect all the videos relating to that there. This one was an avocado dyed paper, but it got hit onto the pan where it was a bit rusty, so it's got this interesting um, sort of marking there. And I think that's really, really cool. A bit different. So these are my scruffy pages. Um, and then I can just stack them how I want them. I was talking, I was actually going to do something a bit different. I was going to off-centre one. I wonder if I can still do that. Particularly if you get one where you've got a very nice edge. And you don't want that cut off. So I've made a silly crease in it. I'm not going to do that. I was going to sew it in there and then not have that crease there. Let's see. And then what you do is instead of having to cut them the whole time, you can just fold them in. So it would then go into the journal, something like that, giving you a shorter one there for interest. And then as you come through to the other side, you then get this. Well, that doesn't matter because we'll decorate that and then that becomes a pocket for something. So that's how to do that. That was very badly demonstrated. Sorry, that's my, that was my fault. Oh, the other thing, we could turn them in. We're probably going to end up cutting half of these bits off anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to end up cutting off strips off the bottom like that anyway. So I can, I'm just going to turn some of them in and just do a few slightly different things. 
with some of the papers to create pockets. I'll come up a bit higher on that one. That's not a very nice edge, so I don't mind that one being cut off. So that's that. And then you probably leave that one. And we'll just build them up and see what they look what they look like when they're all stacked together. So that could be the centre. And then maybe that has pockets or that one in. This would be a signature, or it is a signature, it will become a signature when it gets sewn in. So a pack of papers, when you look at a book, an older book, oh, just lost all my washi tips, um, you see little signatures, Th this is made up of oh, about 15, 20 signatures, little tiny deckled signatures, and they were traditionally sewn into the book like this so you can see there where those those have broken and i've been using the pages of this old dictionary but uh, that's how they've all been bound in and you can't really see the sewing unless you just happen to find the center page so we're just accentuating that idea from the old traditional book binding methods by doing a very crude very simple um mock up and in a junk journal because we like to decorate the pages and fill them up to avoid where you to avoid the effect where you've got them all fanning out you do need a slightly wider spine so you are going to get this if you start adding lots and lots of stuff uh, in at the sides but this one has two signatures and it's got quite a narrow spine well, I don't know what more I can say about that just I can't help myself I like putting all the bits in so that's what I thought we'd do here we just uh, keep the signatures fairly small but then we'll decorate the pages going in so I've I think I've got 10 pieces of paper here 10 or I'm just going to count them one two three four five that's perfect so that's one and then we want to make up this second signature so this one little book is going to have two and it's going to have five pages each okay so we just have a quick flip through now of how it could look i don't like that so i'm changing it I like that either. Why is that wonky? <laughs> sometimes I like wonky and sometimes it annoys me. It's very strange. Depends. Depends how I. No, I don't mind wonky. No, change it around. Get it how you want it. That's nice, isn't it? Right, got there in the end. Okay, good. I mean, it's worth it because then if you don't like it, you, you forever sort of thinking, oh, I should have done those two different. So, we just tap it down. It's a bit bigger than that. Is that short for this? Something's not right here. Anyway, tap it down so everybody's straight at the top at least. Right, bring that down to the bottom. And you could even fold that back on itself as an idea. It's really getting bulky because I'm messing with it. Okay, so there's some rather complicated, I, I was going to do a very standard, very basic, very straightforward um, idea here, but uh, I can't leave that. So some signatures there with some interesting twists. Okay, so I now need to cut that down. So I'm going to get the cutting mat, the ruler and the craft knife. Right, so I'm standing up to do this. I've got the two signatures here. I'm pretty happy with how they are inside. I've got a metal ruler here, which is my rip ruler. My daughter seems to have 
stolen away my other one this is becoming a problem in my house and uh, I've got just a very basic craft knife there uh, just a final check to make sure that everything is in position such as this being down the bottom where I want it and that's fine so if I'm cutting off of the edge, I might have a problem with that one. I haven't thought that through. Let's have a look. So we're only dealing with very small, so I've got quite a bit to cut off, actually. So that won't matter. That won't matter. But this idea here will matter. So I need to come in again. And we'll work something out for that. And then all the scraps that come off of it become things to craft with. Everything that I cut off just becomes another scrap to play with. So I'm going to see what I need here. And I want three of the squares. Three squares. I'm going to make sure that I cut from the top on this one because I've got some interesting folds and things happening down the bottom. So I'm putting the whole thing on a grid line here. It's never going to work out exactly perfect. You get the straight edge of the metal rule here. and Right, so I've lined that up there and there. And I'm just taking the ruler and I've got several pages to cut through here now. So we go once, twice, and on this one I think it wants a third slice, there we go. And then you're left with this, which is interesting because that could be its own tiny booklet in itself. You just want something interesting at the top, maybe cut it down. I'll show you an example of that. Here, here we go. This is one, exactly the same as that, and I just did something a uh, little notepad to things to put in here things that I would be thankful for and that's all that was just those little off cuts be can become <laughs> and those buttons came free off of a blouse that I bought and they had the little spare buttons that you could use and uh, so I no longer have the blouse but I had kept them in my button tin so I just added them on there a little thankful stamp that I had and these are just scraps as well that I've highlighted them with a bit of uh, shimmery paint there and that was what that was all about okie doke so we're okay with that really just hold it in because you've got to look and see where it's going to go it's going to be sewn in there can you see on the in the spine so you've got to really go for for the measurement from that so again i think i'm okay with um three squares across what's three squares Centimeters. I don't know what we're operating under here. Oh, half an inch. The each square is half an inch. So we're doing an inch and a half off of the side here. The measurement here is four inches by just under seven inches. Four by seven. Can you see there's a like tiny amount off of that seven? So, but it was really whatever the cracker box determined. So I'm putting my ruler on there, lining it up, and then just put pressure onto your ruler. I'm finding it's easier to stand up, but then you just sort of want to be over the project, so you might find it easier. Oh, get those out of the way might find it easier if you have to sit down you could ask somebody else to do it or you could try and just make yourself above the project a bit more with a board on your lap or you know, just somewhere where you can get the pressure isn't that lovely i think that's a, I, I like that sort of thing that grunge sort of and look they're all strips now really useful so we just keep those because that's what your ephemera that we will make. And have I got, yes, that's all survived. So that's 
signature number one and this is signature number two and we just repeat the process i won't bore you with it i'll try and wind the video on but just make sure that you're not cutting into anything you've folded up so you're cutting from the top so i will lose that am i okay with that or do i want that on the bottom because that's quite interesting so i'm just going to turn that round and keep that at the bottom and then cut everything off the top and we just go again line it up and take off the inch and a half that was required again however many times it takes you that was just two and again on the top just double check everybody's in position and go again with that often do you it's this is just sort of the bit that you you want to get it right have I just done that completely wrong oh my goodness me what am I doing that's fun but that's for another journal isn't it <laughs> I can't believe I've done that oh my goodness I'm talking and I'm not engaging my brain so really it wanted to be here okay <laughs> oh there's a little scrap there right well these things happen and we just work through it so we've now got two signatures one shorter than the other <laughs> oh right so uh that was not what we wanted to do but that could be a happy accident so what we do is we don't let it vex us <laughs> we just take and we just take them and we mix it up put it back together again and see what we can do how to make how to not do it yet how to find a new way of doing things There's method in the chaos. Okay. Okay. So let's have a look. Yes, that makes sense. Yes, that makes sense. That's quite nice. Mm-hmm. Maybe not that one. A little switch up. Oh, that's a pocket. Okay, that's fine. So, yes. 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 And then this whole middle sit situation here have a play get it right okay so you know if that goes wrong if you do make a mistake if you're talking or you're interrupting if your phone goes you cut the wrong bit off of your journal doesn't matter does it there we go Ta -da! right Whew. need a cup of tea after that i've had another little recount of all the papers in there and i've realized that i had more i had one less than i needed so I've just added this one in, which is too long because we've already cut them down. But um, I'll just show you this one. So this is where we're at now. So I've combined the shorter one and the longer one and ultimately created something far more interesting. So this is what it will look like. So we're going through and then I've got to this bit and then I've got that. And then I've, put, I've sort of added this extra bit in, which is an old photocopy of an old vintage letter so it's an old photocopy of an older vintage letter I'll show you it's really interesting it's a receipt from 1889 but it is a photocopy but then the photocopy is probably from the 80s or something um, and it, it has actually got its own aging on on it so the whole thing is kind of interesting and it's got some um, original writing up there, really smart in there, and gave me this interesting layered look. So just by folding up my papers, I've, um, I've got this interesting look here. And then what I thought, well, that's easy. I'll then just fold that in and create another tuck pocket like I've already done there. So that would be a simple case of turning it in. But then I saw the pretty writing, or pretty, but you know, the interesting writing there, and thought, well, would that be more interesting on the outside? So if I do that, I'm going to then have upside down writing. 
Um, so I'm not sure I want to lose that bit. So I think the best thing is that I cut that bit back and then I will use that that um, lovely writing maybe to make a label or something else. So that's what where I'm at with it at the moment. I just wanted that layered look in there like that. And then I just thought these look quite nice, these shorter pages in the centre rather than down or up. So that covers that over and creates interest there. So all I'm now doing is just cutting this paper here. Go beautiful. That goes there like that. Just want it um, just so I can see that right in there. And um, that's been made with a beautiful old fountain pen you can just see so nice okay so there we go that's how to overcome a mistake if you it's not a mistake because it wasn't it was it was how it was meant to be because you know sometimes these things happen and they just work out for the better it's what we call um a blessing in disguise or um there's always um a silver lining in a cloud. I'm pleased with these. These are my signatures now, which I'm very happy with. And the next stage is to sew them into the journal cover. And that will go in there like that, sewn in, and then that becomes the mini journal. And we'll have some exposed sewing binding down the side. So there we go. That's how that's going to look. I might prefer the pink on the front. Yep, I think that's nice. I'll go with that. Okay, so we're back to our having our cover here. We're going to now try and sew it in our signatures. And for that, you're going to need something to bind the signatures in, so sewing thread. You could use, if you've got some very strong thread, maybe used for um, like a denim, a denim weight cotton, something like that that you could use. You could use dental floss, anything. This is a special waxed um, thread which is used for book binding and you can buy them in a kit like that with a couple of other colours. So I'll leave the link for this set below because I found this incredibly useful. And I've also got, it gives me four colours, um, a tan, a brown, it's sort of like an orangey, rusticy, rusty colour and the white. So we just need a needle and the thread. What else will we need? We need a strip of paper which you fold in half and that needs to be the length of the project. So we're going to use that as a marker so we know where our holes need to go but the most important thing is something to poke a hole in the edges of your project for your signature. You could use the needle and wiggle it you could use the proper tool, which is an awl, which is A-W-L, an awl. And I think this all comes in the kit. I think you buy the, I think it comes as a set. Um, so I'll leave the link in the description below. And you can find all the things and see if that's something that you'd like to invest in. You don't need it at this point. You could just use your needle and um, anything that you've got that's sharp and pointy, maybe. Um, you know, some tweezers, if you've got sharp tweezers, some, something with a sharp point. I'm trying to think, ice pick, that sort of thing you might have. Okay, so we're not going to sew it straight away because we've got to just mark out where everything's going. And for that, I'm going to do something slightly different uh, to what you may have already seen if you're already experienced in making journal. I'm going to do a five-hole pamphlet stitch, not a three-hole so a three hole would be um, easier, you'd have one there, one there, one there and then your binding on the back would just be two stitches and that will look very nice and it's quite straightforward but I thought we'd tackle and practice the five hole pamphlet stitch which is one I'm not as familiar with. <laughs> So I thought on camera, while I'm just, you know, having a go, I thought I'd make it really difficult on myself and go with a five hole pamphlet stitch. Uh, why not? <laughs> OK, so some measuring. So, so we're to do, I'm working here in centimetres and I've got just oh, I've got 17 centimetres, uh, six and three quarter inches. Yes, yeah, so it's about three and a half inches in 
Okay, so I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to mark my middle. So we take the piece of paper that's folded in half that fits the middle of the spine. I've got the middle centre here and then I come in half an inch there and there and then I just need to work out what the middle is between those two points, the middle and the outer dot. So we'll give that a measure and see what we come back with. So it's about, well no it's exactly three inches so that's an easy one we just want to go one and a half and we'll do the same there i think we just eyeball it girls i just think we just don't worry about it girls and boys because otherwise it all got it all gets very boring doesn't it so anyway we've got gonna have one two three four five that's what i want and i need my signatures and i open it up to the middle point and I put that in there. Oops. Keep this lot all together. One there, and we'll do one over the other side. These clips are highly useful, but they could be the little sewing clips, something like that. If you've got sewing clips, that that they're actually they're probably better. Let's dispense with those and go over these. I think, well, now they stick up, whereas that is flatter. Benefits for most. So, you take the awl, you line it up where you want it, and so it's resting on the table almost. Okay, and then what we're doing, we're bending the project forward. Difficult to show you. <laughs> so that comes forward and that stays flat. And to do that, you you hold it sort of like that, and you push it in, bending this forward. As you bend the thing forward, you poke the pokey tool through. So if you've got some sort of spiky pokey tool, this would be ideal. And then, because it gets thicker as you go, you just want to push it in a little bit more, and then that creates a wider hole for you. And we go again. So get it in where you want it, bend it forwards, push it through. But it's a that that's the way I found, that's how I've sort of made it. And then it's fairly easy peasy. I'm just going through now, making the holes a bit wider. And then this last one, bend it forward push it through so it's uh, almost like you're pushing an organ stop like a pinball machine type thing that's how I do it anyway I'm not sure if that's the way but that's certainly done the job and then we just go again on the uh, the next one doing exactly the same thing this is your last chance to check you've got everything in place so that's wrong I want this I want this um, brown piece of paper to come down. So I didn't check the other one. I hope that's okay. All right, and then we can find the send the whole process all over again with the all. So find your center, bring it down, poke it through. Find your center, bring it down, poke it through. Alright, so you see that that is fairly swift. And then you get, and then that clip's in my way, so I really should have moved the clip up further, but um, again, it's worked out. Now, what's next? So that was that, we've done that. Then we've got to mark here how we do this. Now, we want the little bit of paper back to do this. This is just the way I'm doing it today, how I do it tomorrow, maybe different. <laughs> so I've got my guide marker there. I think I'll make it easier for us to see. We're just marking 
exactly where they are with a little ink okay and then I'm going to line that up there uh, it's also good to write top and bottom on here as well so I didn't do that just make sure no there is a way to it because it's different they're not all even so where's my bottom Oh, now I've got to make sure that I've done this one the right way. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? And that's the bottom there. So that's the bottom. Have I done it right? Yes, I have. If that's the bottom. which it is. So I'm just going to write top up here. Okay. Good. So like start with uh, the top and the bottom. If you write it up there, then you'll know all the way through that I, that I got lucky. I should have done that. So now I've got to work out which is the top and which is the bottom of this project. So um, I could have it like that with the flowers at the bottom and, and like that. Or I could have it like this, which I think I prefer, and that will be my front. Therefore, this is the top and this is the bottom. So I get my piece of paper knowing that this is the top, and I line it up here. And now I want to do some dots along here where I'm going to put my holes. I'm now going to spin it this way and put a dot there, a dot there, there there and there and then I'm going to open it out make sure I've still got the top fold it back down again and then I'm bringing it over here line it up again on this crease and now you'll have to take my word for it because I didn't ink all the way across there we go so now I'm putting a dot here lining it up with the one I've already done so those two make sense it doesn't matter that I'm marking my project because these holes are going to be where we punch through and um, they'll be hidden with the sewing. Uh, lid to the pen, where's that gone? Here we are. Now I could just go through with the awl. I could go through with a Japanese um, punching tool which if you've got one of these would work very nicely. You can go through with um, a puncher very on the small cro crocodile. crocodile. Um, if I go through this way, I'm going to probably upset my fabric. So I'll just have a look and see what happens when I push through. It's not too bad. The fabric has separated, but now I've gone through on that top bit. I can come back the other way and push it through that way and then that will push the fabric and everything the other way. So that's how I'm going to tackle this. I'm just going to make a mark, get it right on the centre and push through. I'm using my rubber mat here and uh, just enough so that I can see that coming through and then I'm going back into the hole again and making it bigger and wider by going that way into the project. So I've got my holes there. Just make them wide enough so that you'll be able to work with your needle and thread because that's all the next bit's going to be. It's just a sewing exercise. So I now go down, marking them and I'll do two at a time so I can see, turn it back, find the holes, push the awl through or the spike, the pokey tool or whatever it is you've got, large needle, make your holes but do go through from the front of your project to the back and then you get the raised bits. Can you see the raised bits, so they tear the paper slightly, uh, will go on the inside of the project where they will 
be hidden when you sign oh, sign in when you sew in great that's that done now we want to take our signatures keeping the clips in place as soon as you take that off things move and then it's not so easy you then want to take your thread and we measure by marking the project the length of the project just by eyeballing it so you go one two three lengths of your project and cut no more no less that should give, give you ample I'm going to be mindful of well, that's the top and this is the first signature that I want in so I shall be sewing it in here I need to thread my needle and so we thread that so we start by them in the middle and I'm just holding this here I hope you can see but I'm going to start in the middle hole going through and then through the corresponding hole where I want it coming out the back of the project excuse my finger I uh, just want to get my thread so I'm just going to leave a tail end like that and then I leave that bit free I could now put a clip on that to stop me losing that the middle the middle and out okay so I'm going to just clip my project to the back of the cover okay so we're going to come through next one goes through and then through here And then we go this way, we're going out here. Make sure you get it through the pages. Things move, you can't help that. You just have to wiggle it about until it fits in. Okay, sometimes it's just best to go through the pages, then go through the board at the back. And wiggle it out. All right, and then we're going to come back into the... Now this is where it gets even more tricky is you've got to go back here without interfering with the other thread. You don't want to go sewing through that thread. So you want to sort of aim it away from the thread. The first one. Just make sure you just go slow with it. Okay, so we just go through the the hole we've already been to be very careful not to sew through the stitch you've already made you don't want to go through that cotton and that's your second stitch in there now so come back up again and the next thing is you go right the way over to the other side we're now going down the next one along from the center so again it may be easier just to lift that up, get through the pages first and then go through the hole. Right, just a little bit of a wiggle and that will take the stitch into the middle. Nice big stitch all the way across, okay? And we come out the other side. Oh, now where are we going? Now we come out the other side, then we go back down again through here. Up a bit more length if you're starting to run out and then we come back up here and then this again so this is the tricky bit you just got to try and watch that you don't go through the other bit of thread and you come down through that one I've just put that there to stop the end coming out but um, there we go. and then we come back up and then your final stitch goes in again through here so this is the only awkward bit of it you've just got to try and not sew through the fabric uh, not the fabric the wax thread 
So just trying it like that. I'm going through it. Can you see? That's that's what you don't want. You want to come sort of push that out of your way so that you don't go through it. But arguably, I do need to go under this bit. So I'm just going to move that bit over the top. So I am now coming up the other side. Okay. So I've got my thread on that side. And when I get this wiggled through, I've got my thread on that side. Now, that's fine. The only thing is I didn't leave myself a very long tail there, so I now have very little to, to tie it off, but that is what I will now do. I will now put a knot there, and I'll leave those bits to dangle down. Um, I'll make a decoration of that, so that's how I'm going to deal with this. So I'm just going to check that I've got... Let me take that off now, because they are sewn in effectively. Just a little... Yep, that's lovely and straight, and that's my first signature in. So I'm just going to tie this off now. And that was the five-hole pamphlet stitch. So it's not scary, it, it, it's just a little more tricky. As is tying a knot, apparently. Okay, so just put your knot in. And you can leave it like that. You can cut it really short. You go again. Then that's going nowhere. Actually, that was quite nice because that will now bring those bits down. And I'm just going to cut that there. Okay, that covers that up. Now I need to do is just go through with your bone folder and squash all the pages down okay and that is the first signature in place and then we move on to the next one okay, so we're going to go again with our second signature we just want three lengths of the project so that's two and three and away we go so we're going to start with the middle one so we come through the center of the signature and up through the middle center hole <laughs> my washi tape blaster has not worked out <laughs> that's where I trapped my finger in the door and I was trying to just spare you the bruise um, I must get round to painting the nails <laughs> but I will be doing it straight away the very next day because my my lifestyle just doesn't allow for painted nails I'm just um, I think I'm, I'm making it up if it's right <laughs> If you can't feel it, if you feel resistance, just sort of go through the papers first and then go through the hole. If you feel resistance and it does, doesn't go straight through. Don't get caught up. Come through. Just check that your stitches are going in correctly the first okay. time. Come back over. And we've got to go through this got to go through that hole there without getting um, caught up with the thread. You don't want to go through the thread, so you just want to miss that. And so that it's free, otherwise it won't tighten it. That did it, so we're all right there. And then we come right the way over the top of the project, whoops, bash everything, and go through this one here. So go through. And if you can't, if you really can't get it, don't worry, just fold back your signature and then find the hole for the outside on that hole. And then that, that just comes out there. The more you do it, the more it uh, works out. So this way we've just got to be... I've 
just got to make sure that I'm nowhere near my other thread. So I've got my third stitch in. For some reason that one looks a bit wonky at the moment. I'm going to go back down into that hole there, which should bring me out in my centre position. Okay, and then I'm just going to tuck this thread under here. Pull this one up. Okay, so that one comes up. Make sure the threads are either side of the centre one, and then we can pull that nice and taut. Just check on the outside that it's not too baggy. They're all lining up. That's quite sweet. Yep. So we just make sure everything's nice and taut. You don't see that's a bit baggy. So we just need to give everything a little pull until you can work out which one you need to pull to get that we go. tie it off. There we go. The end is I've got here a very small, what size is that? Half an inch hole punch. And I'm just going to take one of the strips. Yes, here's a bit. Right, so I'm just going to take two punches out of this. Where did that go? And then um, two for the other one as well. So then I'm going to get my glue and I'm going to just sandwich it in the ends of the thread and put the top on there like that. So I'm just sandwiching it in like a little fun button idea, decorating that with and you might not want cerise pink polka dots you might want more of a vintage feel but anyway you'll get the general idea you can just move those so that they are all lined up clean off the glue bits take away your clips Tidy up a bit, and that's that now. So it might be that way. I can't remember. That's the front. <laughs> so they hang down. This is now a fun flip out with that extra fold there that I put in. But equally, that might want to come back and you know be something like that. Doesn't matter. We can sort that out. So that's that. And. That's it guys, that is your journal. That is it, done. You've just got to sort of manoeuvre it around until you're happy, but that's the project. So there we go, let's have a look. If you're not happy with this, don't worry about it. Get a bit of glue in there, stick that right down. Next time, find a wider fabric. We learn as we go. So this is what it looks like. So a flip through of a book all sewn together with ephemera pieces put in, flip outs, pockets already in place. So there we go, we can decorate that one with something more fun. Pocket here, or a tuck, something interesting. Put your bits and pieces in there now. Then we've got the other side of that, so that's it with the dates, that's all nice. That was, so I'm really pleased that I actually cut that down by mistake because it's just given a look that's original and every book is different and it creates its own so that's the center you can see you've got there and it's nice to have put that spotty spotty extra bit down there because you do see it so that's worth worth knowing and that'll settle in as you work it through and you might want to put extra pockets here because you've got a bit of space there in between those two signatures which is quite a nice gap so we leave that to allow for the things that you're going to put in. And then this was this one. I turned that up because I thought that that could be a tuck-in bit. And um, 
make that a bit more of a feature with something stuck on. Then we've got this. I think I did want that to come down, but uh, it looks quite good there. So there we are. We can we can decorate that. And this is the bit that we've just sewn in. Fun, a fun project. It's come together in an afternoon. So that is a one day project or a morning project as you get quicker with it. See that one's stuck on nicely there now. And we just want a corner, some sort of corner thing there and uh, we can start embellishing it decorating it enjoying having fun in the journal so this is a perfect way to use up um, old fabric there would be a much nicer way of doing it if you were doing it professionally or for sale you would have to back and line your fabric before you stuff it down you couldn't just do that because you will find that it will come up a little bit so this is just a scrappy idea in order for you to be able to see the basics and learn from it, practice, have a go. It's interesting because you've got the exposed spine there. The straighter you get it, the straighter your stitching will appear. But the wonky look is also very cool as well. That was the five hole pamphlet stitch which I've shown you today. You can look that up, but you might prefer a three hole pamphlet, uh, three, loop, three hole pamphlet stitch which would look like this. Nothing to stop you stringing some beads on as you go, but that is more of a faff and a fiddle and um, entirely up to you. I, I should get this one sorted out first before you attempt that. And also, um, it's the perfect way to make your string and your binding baggy. So there is, that was a rookie error on my part and I have now altered that and I do, I, uh, do a separate board where I sew this on so it's false. And then the binding is on a different board or, or uh, anchored into the book in a different way. So that's for another time. Um, we'll look at that. Okay, so there we are. That's, uh, that's a, a lovely little project there. I think you'll enjoy doing that. And um, we can decorate that and we start putting all the things in that we've been sort of learning and looking at and... You know, this is a place where we can feature and showcase the little projects that we're doing. And you'll be able to add booklets and embellishments and all sorts of extras that, uh, you know, that you do. And note down ideas. Um, a lovely comment saying that uh, Lady Patricia, thank you Patricia for commenting, that you make notes in a book um, in a spiral binder and that's lovely but maybe you might like to now make your own little fun idea book and this could be your project book. We can put tabs in it and um, note down all the different projects that you would like to try. You just can't try them all at once can you? But if they're all in here with all the things that you need then you're all good to go and you've only got to put on the um, video again and craft along with me. So I hope you've had fun. Please, please subscribe to the channel if you're watching. It will help uh, keep the channel going and um, because it will make YouTube understand that, that I'm worth watching and that you will then be able to see more future videos pop up um, because the YouTube algorithm will allow it uh, so that it won't if you don't subscribe. And it's nothing to you, it doesn't cost anything to you and I certainly don't start emailing you or any of those things. It's just a click of a button and it helps uh, people to be able to see and access more, more fun ideas so that we can all craft together in our own quiet crafting spaces. So thank you for watching. I hope you found fun and value here. Please comment and let me know what you thought so that I can understand if this has been well received and it'll encourage me to make more things for you. Okay guys, so thank you very much and above all else, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now. <laughs>